Good morning, fellow YouTubers. My name is Mike. This is Extreme Automotive. That's a train in the background. And right now I am standing in the blank space where the DeLorean once sat. Yes, the DeLorean is not in the shop. So why is the DeLorean not in the shop? Well, it's story time. And as you guys know, I like to tell stories. So if you remember uh, the video sometime back when um, Fred, Melanie, and I went to pick up Jay Leno from the airport, uh, when we came back, uh, Fred has a neighbor that has a lot of cars, so Fred, of course, asked me if I wanted to meet him. I said, of course I did. So we stopped, looked at his cars, hung out with him for a little while, and as we're standing there, this guy's name is Armando, by the way, Armando says, hey, there's a guy across the street that owns a DeLorean. Okay, you guys kind of know this story. So um, his name's Josh. I met up with Josh. Josh and I have talked and met a couple of times. Super cool guy. Um, of course, my DeLorean needs some work done on it, so Josh recommended a guy named Clint up in Sacramento. Okay, I'm getting to the point, I promise. So uh, anyway, I was able to connect with Clint and um, today my DeLorean is actually going up to Clint up in Sacramento and Armando has a trailer and I asked him if he would be willing to transport it up. So basically me, Armando and Josh are gonna take a run up to Sacramento and see Clint drop off the DeLorean. Armando came over yesterday afternoon with his trailer and uh, picked up the DeLorean, got it all secured on his trailer. And so right now, my DeLorean is sitting on the back of Armando's trailer at his house in Oakdale. So we're actually heading to Oakdale right now and um, I wanted to do this in the light of the shop because it's very early in the morning. It's just a little after six right now. We wanted to get on the road fairly early. So why am I talking? We need to get on the road. We need to get over there, right? So next stop, more light and um, DeLorean on the trailer. I don't even know if you guys can see this. It's like super dark out, but that really is a DeLorean. It really is and it really is mine so it's still so early but um, we're gonna get on the road here Mondo's putting his garage door down where he's trying and Josh is in the truck so yeah we're good to go this is Josh say hi say hi Josh Hello. fellow DeLorean owner I've been talking about yeah cool guy so you guys can't even see Armando over there, but we're gonna check out his cars later and we're gonna check out his DeLorean later. So, but first we're gonna get some more light. It's pretty dark. <laughs> stupid me forgot the keys at home so we're gonna have to figure out a way to get this off the trailer and put it someplace and then I get to drive back up to Sacramento a little later this evening and bring him the keys so I can't believe I did that so anyway but we did make it easy trip so that's Armando say hi Armando, say hi, Armando. he's got a bunch of cool cars we'll check out when we get back and he actually has a Viper for sale so if any of you guys need a Viper I'll show you guys that What's that? It's not there? It's getting its oil changed, but he's got a really cool Viper. 2003? 2004? 2003, 26,000 original miles. Very clean. And he wants, you want 30 for it? He wants 30. That's a steal for that car. I've seen it. It's a steal for that car. So if any guys are interested in a Viper, hit me up. I'll put you in contact with him. So now we got to see how we're going to get this thing off and where we're going to put it and go from there.
We got it out, or we got it off, almost professionally. Originality. Touch the motor, and you It's whispering to you. This is Clint. Hi, Clint. <laughs> Clint's gonna be working on the DeLorean. And, oh yeah, this is this is his DeLorean. It's about it's, nine, almost ten years of, of hard labor and you know wanting this car since I was five. So I had some time to plan it out and think about what to do. That is awesome. But uh, it's, it's always been a little bit of a challenge and and extensively awesome. modified, right? I understand you've done a lot of stuff to this. Um, yeah, you could say that, but uh, it's possible you could make it stock if you threw the time and effort back into it. So it's not like it's uh, permanent of everything. Okay. Um, but I, my goal is always to get the car fixed up because it was a pretty big basket case when I got it. It hadn't run in 10, 15 years and it had been come from the East Coast, had rust, had all sorts of issues. But I really wanted to experience a stock DeLorean and then figure out where to go from there. I okay. knew I never wanted to keep it 100% original. I was never going to be a concourse guy. Right. Um, but I wanted to keep a lot of the DNA into the car because that's obviously what makes it unique. Right. Uh, besides the look, obviously. So still trying to balance time and budget and, and insanity and all that to try <laughs> and turn into my kind of dream car, I suppose. This is very clean under the hood few little iterations of what I've done, a lot of wiring, uh, dewiring and wire tucking and rerouting of, of plumbing and all sorts of other parts to try and make it look a little bit cleaner. And then everything you can really see has been powder coated, so it should be a lot more durable. Didn't stay that clean. That looks good. Um, but I try to drive the car as much as I can, and uh, that doesn't mean you have to keep it clean for a while so right yeah and you got to drive them so we're going for a ride in Clint's DeLorean oh that's cool I like that yeah I like to be able to see the car while I'm in the car and, uh, <laughs> you can actually watch movies back to future on there if you want it oh right on so. who could ask for anything more so I do like how low this vehicle is but you don't really have to baby it in its terms of uh, curves and speed bumps. There's, I notice that. There's still enough travel that you can, you can get going without having to worry about bottoming out. Honestly though, if you do burn, bottom out in the middle of DeLorean, it's, there's not really anything to damage, nothing to hurt. I mean, it, you, you'll tap the, the fiberglass a little bit, but it's pretty durable and there's a few little scratches, but I'm, I'm not going to be upset about that compared to like ripping out an exhaust or right. something out of a conventional vehicle. Yeah, I'm impressed because his DeLorean is as low as mine and we were going right over those speed bumps, no problem. Yeah. This thing runs really nice. It goes good. <laughs> it goes really good. Probably a little better when it's warmed up, but... So what have you done like modification wise to get the performance out of this? So it's still the original motor. Uh, I did rebuild it about two years ago, which was a little bit of an ordeal uh, due some, to some parts that didn't quite work as they were supposed to. But okay. um, again, because of smog, this has kind of become my smog and I'm going to build another motor or do a motor swap eventually. So it has uh, slightly ported heads by myself, just mainly taking off some of the ugly casting marks to make it flow better because exhaust ports are pretty terrible on these heads. Okay. Um, rebuilt injectors, the hose, uh, hose kit, none of that's really going to be any performance. Um, I used to work at a shop that had a dyno so I could actually play around with little tricks to see if that actually made any power or not. And the surprise
surprisingly, one of the most easy things to do to make power was actually to delete the ignition resistor that goes on the firewall. Really? You saw earlier that I had nothing on that back firewall. Okay. So that resistor is mainly to help extend the life of ignition components, spark plug, cap, rotor, and all that stuff by reducing the power that goes to the coil, and therefore high voltage on these older systems can start corroding electrical components. There's a lot of arcs going on through the system as as any vehicle with a distributor would have. Okay. So by raising the voltage, I was actually getting a better spark. I could raise uh, the spark gap, and I got a dyno proven. I don't remember the exact figure. I have it written down on form post, but it was something like four or five horsepower right out of the box. That's simply by removing a part that I thought was visually ugly as well. So awesome. That was kind of a big thing. I tried uh, removing the catalytic converter. That really didn't gain me any power, unlike what other people are saying, that exhaust is super restrictive. Okay. Uh, I currently do have the stock exhaust on it again for smog, but I do have an early DeLorean Houston exhaust system, which I really like. It's all stainless. It, just, it sounds pretty good. Um, and I've dynoed that before and after the same day. No one's ever done that that I could find online. Okay. Dyno with stock exhaust, take it off, put on the Houston exhaust, or similar, and dyno it again. And it was uh, about 12% increase in power and torque. Wow. So that's pretty noticeable. Um, it's not going to make it a rocket, but we're talking instead of 105 wheel horsepower, we're talking 114 or 116. So, oh, yeah. Um, but the sound, the bite, it just kind of makes it sound like it's got a little bit more bark than bite. But, like these cars, yeah. Yeah, but it's kind of. Maybe all the car really needs, you know, you're not, cars are so fast these days, you know, you got electric Teslas doing 0 to 60 in two seconds, so yes. you're yeah. not going to be winning those races, unfortunately. Right, <laughs> and these cars were never designed, and I don't even know if I'd want one that would go that fast. I can't yeah. imagine a car like this, you know, know what I know and driving it like that, I I can't imagine a car that would do 0 to 60 in three seconds. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately you're going to start breaking the rest of the car, so... Right. Um, so in terms of the other modifications, uh, really the front end was the big thing. I had a lot of uh, small cracks and rust in the front end of this vehicle. The rear as well. The, the car originally stayed in Maine and um, New Jersey kind of area for a long time, so it did get a lot of rust into this regular okay. steel frame. Um, I ended up cutting off the entire crumple tube system section on the front of my frame and replacing with tubular steel because I, I built roll cages and race cars for a living. Oh, nice. And I have a tubing bender at my disposal, so why not build a tube frame front end, something that's durable and strong that I could build better front suspension off of. Um, so currently it's still similar stock suspension, fully boxed, fully powder coated, new bushings, new ball joints, all that. Um, still a stock sway bar, which I'm working on building a better, stronger, stiffer sway bar. Okay. But suspension wise, uh, it's lowered springs and then Coney adjustable front springs that are actually for a Pontiac Fiero. Okay. And I believe I was told that those were, were the one of the last sets available. So unfortunately, no one can really go out and say, hey, I want those Coney shocks. You could probably find something similar. But they were the right height, uh, they were the right valving for a, for a light front ended car. It, it rides really nice. I know, like mine, I was kind of surprised being low like this. It, it, it rides better than I thought it was going to do. And um, this thing goes pretty good. I mean, it's it, it's definitely a notable difference from like driving mine. And, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, again, I always want a little bit more out of it. But right now I'm, I'm being happy with it running smooth and consistently. So it, yeah. I can work on other objects and other other repairs on the door panel I'm taking all apart so I can finally fix the air vents. I've never had air vents on these doors and they're okay. a little bit of a pain because they the little panel here can break and whatnot. So right. DeLorean, if you're intimate with DeLoreans and you know DeLoreans, this thing moves really nicely. 
and for basically some minor mods, um, I'm very pleased with it. So I think my DeLorean is going to be in good hands. Okay, that is cool. But this is cool as this is Josh's DeLorean. Is that the same cam same style camera from? It's the exact same model. Is it? It's the exact same model of JVC yep. Marty McFly used in the movie. Yeah. I'm kind of a Back to the Future fan here, if you can't tell. Okay, I'm going to record you from my YouTube channel. <laughs> right. <laughs> there we go. Right. Standing on the corner of the Twin Pines Mall. October something. 22nd, I think. We got the flux capacitor in there. Picture based upon an ad print that came out in the 80s that John DeLorean took, and uh, DeLorean Motor Company got a hold of the original cell, reproduced uh, 500 of them. Okay. Um, I don't know if they sold all of them, but uh, 81 and 82 were already taken, so I got 83. So you can find the car here. Nice. They were actually produced. We got the flux capacitor fluxing. We got the motor starting. We got the door coming down. Getting to ride in two DeLoreans in one day. See, here it was a couple weeks ago. I'd never even really been up <laughs> close to one. God bless America. <laughs> is that a Biff Tannen quote? <laughs> God bless America. It is. <laughs> Unintentionalized, it may be. So the only difference is this is an automatic. So we're cru cruising on the automatic. Got to see how that feels, but it feels good. And this is stock suspension. Feels like it's got a little bit more ride, a little more give to it, which what, what I would expect. Very clean, nice running, nice riding car. And so this one has just under 17,000 original miles on it. This is a very low mileage as an example. Runs on cocaine. Right, runs on cocaine, yeah. The true snowmobile, yeah. Yes. License plate say dealer. <laughs> Alright, so I am about to set sail in the automatic DeLorean. So that's another thing I think he's got to tinker with mine too, is my, um, like I said, my throttle. Did you notice when, when you drove mine, my throttle, you had to push it down like about an inch? Yeah, it's a little off. Not, not too much, though. All right. I'm always nervous driving other people's cars. <laughs> Just like your car. Especially a DeLorean. A lot easier. Actually, this is very easy. Yeah, this is kind of nice. Big, huge brake pedal down below. Uh-huh. Brakes well. Maybe I shouldn't have driven this one. I might be regretting <laughs> the fact that I got a manual <laughs> transmission. Make sure you cut that from your video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would have still been cool. If I would have went with an automatic, it would have still been cool. Because this is actually very nice to drive. Like I said, you either love DeLoreans or you hate them. There's like not a lot of in between. It seems like it, people either make fun of me or for the fact that I bought one, or they're like, that's the coolest thing, I gotta see it. But this is a cool car, it's an iconic car. I mean, this isn't coming off for a while. <laughs>
transporting the car up there. That was really cool of him. So, um, yeah, I'm going to end the video. If you like it, definitely give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, you got to subscribe to this channel, Extreme Automotive Addiction. We live up to that. And P.O. Box and Instagram will be in the description below. God bless. Take care. Have an absolutely amazing day.